I'm Roy Bertolotto. I'm the sales manager here at ZV. So let's talk a little technical now. Let's talk about a cable system. Your customer has cable coming into their facility. And that's represented here by this cable company feed. And on this cable lives a number of what I refer to as organic channels. They don't require a cable box to decode them. They're simply QAM cable channels that any digital TV can receive. And there might be 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, who knows how many channels could be on there. And your customer wants to add some video content. They either want to add digital signage or they want to add a satellite receiver or whatnot. Look at how simple this is. We're simply going to take that source. We're going to send the signal to a ZV box. The ZV box, in turn, is going to create a QAM cable TV channel, exactly the same type of channel that the cable company is feeding the system. We're simply going to combine the two together. And in this case, we're using a simple $5 splitter backwards. A splitter and a combiner are the same device, just different labels. Using a splitter backwards, we've combined these organic channels along with our channel that we've just developed. And now all those channels, once again, live on the coax, and it's simply distributed to any number of TVs. Just a great example of how easy it is to integrate a ZV modulated signal with existing cable coax. So let's quickly look at some of these advantages. What's the advantage of broadcasting HD over coax? Well, first of all, obviously, it's already there in many instances. 135 simultaneous HD channels over a single wire. All TVs sold today have built-in QAM tuners. TVs that were sold before six years ago, just be careful. They might not have a QAM tuner. But any TV that's six years old or so uh, will have a QAM tuner. To add a channel to an existing system, you're simply inserting it using a splitter backwards. Adding another TV, we're finding the coax, we're cut, splitting, and dropping to a new TV. You can upgrade and add channels one at a time. There's no need to do everything at once. In many facilities that have analog, they might not want to afford uh, changing out all of their modulators initially to digital. They certainly can do it piecemeal. They can do a couple now and a couple next month and uh, keep going. We have many uh, customers that we've heard of that are doing just that. Let's talk about adding that display. Simple system, ZV boxes with sources, combined, all living on this one coax, now being split to multiple TVs, and we want to add another TV. So this piece of coax was running to the TV. We're simply going to add another splitter off that feed and add two more TVs. Very, very simple. Let's add another source. We had three units running into this four-way splitter. We're simply going to add another ZV box with its source, assign it a channel, and these TVs will now receive that channel. Very simple. We talk about running long lengths. We talk about running a lot of TVs. Certainly, at some point in time, you're going to run out of signal. ZV boxes output 25 dB or 34 dB, depending on the mo model. That's an awful lot of gain, but there is inherent loss in splitters, combiners, and the length of wire. The beauty of the new digital technology is digital TVs are very sensitive. They only require a couple of dB for full resolution. The spec on digital TVs is negative 10 to plus 10, but when I'm designing a system, I like to have it a little more robust, and I like to see 2 or 3 dB at each TV but it certainly will work in a pinch with less. So if we look at this system and we have four ZV boxes feeding into a combiner, we're going to lose about 3 dB per combined slot. We're going to lose about 3 dB for every 100 feet of coax. And then we're going to lose 3 dB every time you split the signal. Now these are very rough estimates. And by the way, we have a much more involved webinar technical webinar that you can join, uh, which goes over this in much more detail. But in this case, we're just looking at loss. We're just going to simply add up all that loss and calculate what each TV will see. Now, if there's not enough gain at the TVs themselves, we need to add a small amplifier. But here's another beautiful thing about digital domain. Back in the days of analog, this amplifier 
in a situation like I'm showing right here, it could have cost a few hundred dollars. It had to have extremely low signal-to-noise ratio. It had to have extremely good sparse image rejection and all other specifications. In the digital domain, we're simply moving ones and zeros. I've seen $50 amplifiers being used in extensive systems with great results. You do not need a real expensive amplifier to increase the gain on a digital modulated system. 